In this topic, we are looking at recognising liabilities, and in particular, we're focusing on provisions and contingent liabilities. So this diagram indicates the decision rules that you need to go through with an item to determine whether it is a liability. And also, it can help you to determine whether there should be a contingent liability and whether it should be disclosed in the notes. So this uh, past exam question has Coin Rich Limited, who offers a warranty plan on their products. The estimated warranty liability for the period is 10% of cost of goods sold, and cost of goods sold for the period was 30,000. By the end of the year, 1,000 of warranty costs was actually incurred. So, and we had also to assume that the company did not replenish the warranty account after drawing down. So where it says that there was warranty costs actually incurred, that means a customer has come and under the warranty received cash in exchange for the faulty goods. So is the warranty going to result in a liability? So is there a present obligation? Yes, by offering to customers the ability to return under a warranty, then it, it, it is the result of a past event and that the customers can return under the warranty, uh, under the warranty policy. Would it result in an outflow of economic benefits? Yes. So if a customer has a faulty goods, they can come and to coin rich and have a cash refund. So yes, if, if the obligation becomes due, then future economic benefits will flow from the entity. Now, is it probable? So this is a separate test. So sometimes it could be that a future economic benefits might uh, flow from the entity, but do we think it is more than 50% likely to happen? So probable being roughly the 50% test, more than 50% probable, not less than 50% not probable. So is it likely, is it probable? Yes, and we can say this because of the past behaviour and that they have this, this warranty provision and we even have this evidence that a customer has returned their goods under the warranty. If the question however had said that uh, customers never return their goods, we have no past evidence, then you could say no, that's not probable. So next, can we measure reliably? And the answer is yes, because we can put a percentage on it. And in this case, the company says 10% of cost of goods sold. So that's a way of estimating with reliability what they think the warranty is. If it was incredibly difficult to estimate and they couldn't put any percentage on it, then we would have to answer no. So yes, we're going to record a liability of a warranty. And it's going to be a provision. So how, what do we estimate the liability and expense for the year to be? Well, the liability will be the warranty provision account. And during the period we topped up the provision, we provided it for an extra 3000 for uh, returns under the warranty but we used up 1,000 in actual warranty refunds. And we expensed for this period 3,000 in terms of providing them for the warranty. So in part B, the journal entries. So to provide for refunds are into the warranty, so estimated a 10% of cost of goods sold. 
we debit the warranty expense, 3000 and credit provision for warranty. So we match what we think our obligation for this period, the provision liability, with the expense. And the expense is matched to the sales revenue of the period. So if we sell some goods this period, we have the potential expense an obligation of return under the warranty. So we're matching to the sales revenue of the period. And during the period we had some cash refunds as well under the warranty. So this will be a using up of the provision that we put aside before. So debit the warranty and credit cash. It could alternatively have been credit inventory if we had at the damaged or faulty goods returned in exchange for new goods. But in this case, it's a cash refund. So part two of this question, note the following was included in financial statements. So note number 19, contingent liabilities. The company was sued by Fake Coin Limited for the company's alleged willful and deliberate violation of a patent. Liability is not admitted and the company will defend the action. Professional legal advice indicates that no loss will result from these claims. So is what is outlined above in note 19 going to appear? So it does not appear on the company's balance sheet, but on a note. So by applying the definition and recognition criteria of liability, briefly explain why it does not appear on the balance sheet. So essentially we're looking how does it meet a contingent liability test, not a liability which is recorded in the balance sheet. So we examine this item. It's a lawsuit. Is it a present obligation from past event? Yes. So it was a violation of the patent which occurred in the past, which is what the lawsuit is about. Is it probable? And there will be future economic benefits or uh, an outflow of those benefits? No. As the legal team believe it's unlikely that it will result in, uh, in damages being awarded. If it was a yes, then it would be a provision in the, balance, in the balance sheet. If we know the outcome or we're certain of the outcome, so once again, that probable test, is it more than 50% likely to happen? So in this case, it's less than 50% probable. So contingent liability in the notes. So the court has not yet reached a decision and we can rely on that, that it's highly unlikely that there's an outflow of future, future economic benefits. So part B, uh, so going back to that warranty plan, consider whether CoinRich needs to recognise warranty liabilities on the balance sheet or in the notes and why. So in the balance sheet as a line item or in the notes. So is there a present obligation? Yes, we offer the warranty. So customers who purchase the goods under the warranty could have them re returned to us. Is it probable that there's future economic benefits uh, being outflowed? Then the answer is yes. And we can see that, that past behavior, there's customers returning goods under the warranty. So that's this is the thought process to get to that provision in the balance sheet rather than a contingent liability. So we record in the balance sheet, it's gonna be a line item of a liability and it's that past event being probable, so more than 50% likely it's going to happen, but we don't know the timing and the amount. So we do a provision rather than a regular liability, such as a payable.